Number 11 then from part A of paper 2 of the 2021 advanced tyre resource paper. It's the sequences and series. It tells you three consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence are given by this. It doesn't tell you it's the first three. It's just three consecutive terms. So you have to do two things here in part A. One, find the common difference and hence find the value of x. It's just for two marks. Well, the common difference will be the difference between two consecutive terms. You can choose whichever ones you like. You'd have to choose these two really, wouldn't you? To facilitate the calculation. So that would be x minus 7 take away x minus 1. Just put them in brackets to identify them as the consecutive terms. So the x's cancel out, leaving a negative 7 plus a 1, so d is negative 6. It was only the one mark. You could maybe just have stated that, because you can see it's dropped 6. That must be true for this one as well. Now, what was part 2 again? Hence find the value of x. Well, that's where you use the next 2 then. So if you were to subtract the next 2, so if you were to take, again, I'm just putting that in a bracket just to identify that as a term, the following term minus the preceding term. The difference between the terms should be negative 6. Because this time, when you subtract them, you'll end up with an x. So you'll have x, 2x take away x, and you've got negative 9 plus 7, so that's a negative 2 to go across. So that would come across and make negative 4. So they were one mark each. Hey, right, and so to part B. Given that this one here, x minus 1, was in fact the 21st term, so there's the notation for it, u21, find the value of the first term for one mark, and then get an expression for the nth term of the sequence. Well, if that's the 21st term, well, the 21st term would be formed by taking the very first term and adding on 20 lots of the difference. Well, we know what the difference is, and we know what this term is. So I'm just going to continue from here. So a plus 20 lots of d should equal that u21, but we know what it is. It's x minus 1, and x was negative 4, so that's negative 4 take away 1. So we're just going to carry on here now. So a plus 20 lots of d, so that's 20 lots of negative 6, should be negative 5. So a is going to be negative 5. That's going to be, because it's negative there, it'll be plus 120. So the first term must have been 115. That's worth a mark. And what was part two? A simplified expression for the nth term. Well, that was the first bit, of course. Well, I'll put that there. Nth term. So what would un be? Well, it's quite easy to get to un. Un would be, you start with the first term, but you add one lot less of the common difference. Well, we know the first term was 115. And the common difference is negative 6. So we just have to simplify that. So that's 115. Didn't mean to write that. Oops. Minus 6n but plus 6, so it'll be better having the number part first so don't have a wee exposed negative sign sticking out. So that would be 121 minus 6n. But it was just the one mark. Now the second part. Three consecutive terms of a geometric sequence are given by this. Now, that's exactly the same as it was in part A. Well, they've just changed it to a Y because those Ys, I suppose, will be different from those Xs. Well, previously, when they've done this type of question, they've just still kept it as the original one and said, now consider this as, because it's a separate question, as a geometric uh, sequence. Well, if they form a... The consecutive terms of a geometric sequence, now this is for six marks this time, the first part was only four, find two possible values of y and the corresponding ratios. Now this is for three marks. 
Well, if it's geometric, that means you've got a multiplying factor. There's going to be a common ratio between them. So that ratio would be given by dividing consecutive terms. So y minus 7 divided by y minus 1 would give the ratio. You're not going to get it from that. But so would 2y minus 9 divided by y minus 7. Now you can use this pair to form an equation to find y. Well, so it's just going to be cross multiply. So y minus 7 squared will be 2y minus 9, multiply whichever way around, multiplied by that. So square the bracket. y squared, double it, minus 14y squared plus 49 will be, and that's 2y squared. I suppose you could just do this in the one go. Minus 2, minus 9, minus 11y, but plus 9. You get one mark, of course, for that first part. For taking the ratios of consecutive terms, which must be the common ratio, obviously, to form an equation. Now we need to get this to a quadratic. So, take it to the side, but read the other way around. So that leaves me 1y squared here. I'm going to put it over here. And then I've got plus a 14, so I've got a plus 3y. And I've got minus that, so that'll be minus a 40. That gets a mark. No, it's just a case of solve that. So it'll be y, y, 5 eighths, plus the 8 minus the 5. So here's the two solutions. So either y is 5. Now, if y is 5, that means that the corresponding ratio, I'm just going to use this one because it's easier, would be 5 minus 7 over 5 minus 1. So that's negative 2 upon 4, which is negative a half. The other one would be y equals negative 8. In which case, in the ratio would be for negative 8, again using this one, negative 8 take away 7 over negative 8 take away 1. That's negative, I'll just put it down, negative 15 over negative 9. So it's 15 over 9. Dividing by 3, you've got 5 upon 3. So r equals 5 upon 3. For that mark. And so to part d, now it gives you some more information. One of the values of y gives an associated geometric series, that's the sum of the terms rather than just the sequence, which is just a layout of the individual terms, which has got a sum to infinity. One, identify the value of y which would do that. Well, the only way you're going to get a sum to infinity is if the terms get smaller and smaller. So you'll be having to multiply by a proper fraction. If you were to be multiplying by 5 upon 3, each following term would be bigger and bigger, so it would just get bigger and bigger forever. So this is the one. So if it says so, that what you want is you want the one where y equals 5. And the reason is, as the absolute value of the ratio is less than 1. Maybe I could have said at the top, sum to infinity exists for y equals 5. Because the common ratio, the value of the common ratio, the absolute value is less than 1. That's worth a mark. And then part 2 says, could 64 upon 3 be a possible value for this? We don't know what the value is because you don't know the first term. But I do know how to work out the sum to infinity. The sum to infinity is just a over 1 minus r. Or if I put that the other way round, a over 1 minus, and r is negative a half, should give what it said, 64 upon 3. In fact, putting that down is worth a mark, but you know, I don't think you should get it until you've got found what a is. Now, all you can do from this is find a. So you could find the associated a, the first term that would lead to a sum to infinity of 64 upon 3. Now, what have you got here? So that's 64 upon 3. That's 1 
and a half, so that's 3 upon 2. Dividing by 3 upon 2 will go to multiply by 3 upon 2. That'll cancel, so that goes down to 32. You'd have thought that would have been the mark. In order to get a sum to infinity of 64 upon 3, with a common ratio of negative a half, I'd have to have a first term that says 32. Well, that all sounds fine. So what could possibly go wrong then? Determine whether it is a possible value. Well, the only thing that might go wrong is it might not give the correct values here because you're talking about the case where y is 5. So these terms, so these consecutive terms actually go, that term is 5 take away 1, 4. That term is 5 take away 7, negative 2, and so on. So it could be that starting at 32 and continuously multiplying by negative a half, you might not arrive at those values. Well, you can test that. Because the way you get to any particular term would be, you start with the first term and you multiply by one less law of the common ratio. So could you get this calculation to work? Could you find a value of n, in other words, that would make this work? Well, just taking that particular term there. If you take that term, that term y minus 1, that's a 4. Should I have to state? There's only one mark for this bit. That should come from 32 times negative a half to the power something. Can I get some power that would make that come to 4? Well, you could take that stage further. I could say, take that across, that's an eighth. So can I get that to make an eighth? Can you get negative a half n minus 1 to equal an eighth? Of course, this is a question because it might not work. Well, in order for that to become an 8, you'd have to cube it. But if you were to cube it, it would be negative. So the answer is no there. You would need n minus 1 to equal 3. But if it was 3, it would give a negative an 8th. Or in terms of the term there, from negative an 8th, it would give a negative 4. You would need n minus 1 to equal 3. But this would give negative 4 for the term instead of 4. Which means that... 64 upon 3 is not a possible, just abbreviate it, sum to infinity. Got a bit of work in there for that one mark.